Daily Words of God As one who believes in God, you should understand that, today, in receiving the work of God in the last days, and all the work of God's plan in you, you have really received great exaltation and salvation from God. All of God's work in the entire universe has focused on this group of people. He has devoted all His efforts to you and sacrificed all for you. He has reclaimed and given to you all the work of the Spirit throughout the universe. That is why I say, you are the fortunate. Moreover, He has shifted His glory from Israel, His chosen people, to you in order to make the purpose of His plan fully manifest through you group of people. Therefore, you are those who will receive the inheritance of God and even more, the heirs of God's glory. Perhaps you all remember these words, for our light affliction which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In the past, you have all heard this saying, yet none understood the true meaning of the words. Today, you know well the real significance they hold. These words are what God will accomplish in the last days and they will be accomplished upon those cruelly afflicted by the great red dragon in the land where it lies. The great red dragon persecutes God and is the enemy of God. So in this land, those who believe in God are subjected to humiliation and persecution. That is why these words will become reality in you group of people. As the work is carried out in a land that opposes God, all of His work is met with inordinate hindrance, and many of His words cannot be accomplished in good time. Hence, people are refined because of the words of God. This, too, is an element of suffering. It is greatly arduous for God to carry out His work in the land of the great red dragon. But it is through such difficulty that God does a stage of His work to make manifest His wisdom and wondrous deeds. God takes this opportunity to make this group of people complete. Because of people's suffering, their caliber, and all the satanic disposition of people in this unclean land, God does His work of purification and conquest so that, from this, He may gain glory and gain those who stand witness to His deeds. This is the full significance of all the sacrifices that God has made for this group of people. That is to say, God does the work of conquest just through those who oppose Him. Therefore, only doing so can manifest the great power of God. In other words, only those in the unclean land are worthy to inherit the glory of God, and only this can give prominence to the great power of God. That is why I say, the glory of God is gained in the unclean land and from those who live within. This is the will of God. This is just as in the stage of Jesus' work. He could only be glorified among those Pharisees who persecuted Him. If not for such persecution and the betrayal of Judas, Jesus would not have been ridiculed or slandered, much less crucified, and thus could never have gained glory. Wherever God works in each age, and wherever He does His work in the flesh, He gains glory there, and there gains those He intends to gain. This is the plan of God's work, 
and this is his management. Only people there are worthy of 
of inheriting His glory. God's power is great, but must be revealed in the impure land, as is His will.